By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to the Reprint Masters. And in case you haven't been following this tournament here on the channel, let me tell you, this tournament is all about the reprint sets, 4th edition, revised and chronicle. So if you're in this tournament, you had to make a deck with cards only printed in these three sets. So it's all about reprints. Of course, you can use preprints and prints that came after as long as they have the same art and the same frame. Okay, in today's match, we're going to look at the top four, a semi-final battle between Big Genie Beats, that is a, a green, blue, and white deck piloted by David, and he's taking on Matt, Matt Strott, that is, and he's playing with a suicide black deck. It's mono black, it's unsleeved, it's hilarious. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also skip this section, go straight to the games. I know some of you prefer to do that. The easiest way to do that is by checking the, des the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that'll take you straight to the games. And in the description below, you can also find more information about this tournament, the specific rules of this tournament. For example, Mishra's Factory is restricted in this tournament. And also you can find a link to the tournament website where you can see all the uh, the deck photos. So if you're like, oh, I want to make a budget deck, then have a look at the deck photos because these are all reprint decks and most of them are very budget friendly. Okay, now that you're completely informed, we are going to start with the deck decks. I'm actually gonna start with the deck of David, Big Genie Beats. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of David, Big Genie Beats. And obviously that name comes from the fact that he's playing with a lot of gins and freets, right? We see four surrender freets, four Urnum gins, and four Mahamoti gins. And I love that, and of course, uh, by playing out the Mahamotis, because they're, you know, six to cast pretty steep. He is playing with four Birds of Paradise and three Lanor Elves. He's also playing with four Elvish Archers. I guess those cards are pretty good to kind of, the Archers, I mean, to kind of hold down the fort until you've got enough mana to play those big Flyers. Although Surrender Perfeet is only three. I mean, this deck is looking really good. And what you have to understand is that there is no City in a Bottle in this format because City in a Bottle has not been reprinted in Revised Chronicles or 4th Edition. So that makes cards like Urnum Jin and Surrender Perfreed better. There also isn't a Maze of If in this format because again, it has not been reprinted. It's only in the dark. Well, it's been reprinted after those sets with some new yucky art, but it hasn't been reprinted in the old school reprint sets. Let me let me put it that way. So that makes a card like Surrender Perfreed really good in this meta. Now we also see, of course, that standard white package of Sword Supply Shares, Disenchant and Balance. Uh, it's going to be interesting because the Swords cannot target the Black Knight, so there could be some opening here for, for Matt, uh, his opponent uh, today. I'm not surprised that David has made it into the top four with this deck. This is looking just like a really strong and solid creature-heavy deck. And the thing is, I think the opponent today is playing Mono Black and... Um, that the mono black deck has the potential to go faster but because of all the ramp in this deck you know the the Lanawar elves and the birds of paradise i think this deck can go very quick as well and it has some cheap creatures also in the deck like elvish archers and surrender perfeed so it's going to be a really tough matchup for the mono black player i do think that the terrors will be quite good in the um, uh, board of the mono black player talking about that deck let's take a look at the deck of the opponent of david today matt let's have a look at his mono black brew and here we see the deck of Matt. I mean, this is awesome, isn't it? Suicide Black, completely sleeveless, no sleeves, no sideboard, no fear. And then it ripped fear there. And the concrete play mat, this is hilarious. The vintage rubber deck holder. I love this mat. Uh, it takes me back because I used to play in, in high school on the floor next to the toilets or wherever we could play. We also played outside quite a lot. Um, and yeah, always sleeveless at first. Later, we had those penny sleeves. But yeah, those our cards were wrecked. I still have some of the cards from uh, from that time of Magic, and I really cherish those. You can, you can when you look at the the back of the cards, you can kind of see that that it's been played with on concrete. So that's super cool. And how cool is it that your deck has made it to the semifinals? And when we're looking at, at the deck at the cards themselves, it is a good strategy, right? Mono black. It's very aggressive. 
Um, you want to have a turn one play, probably Dark Ritual, preferably into if not Expector, but also what about Dark Ritual into Urk Raiders Unholy Strength? You've got a 4-4 turn one. And look at those altered Unholy Strengths, by the way. That's hilarious. I do think against David today, it's going to be a tough matchup because David, as we've seen earlier, he's got a lot of ramp going on. That ramp will help him to probably play out like a Surrender Perfect or an Urnum Jin quite early on the board. And those creatures are just simply too big. They can stop the creatures here in this mono black deck. Then again, I also see, you know, some, some better cards in this matchup. For example, the Four Terrors are going to be super good. The Ashes to Ashes is going to be good. Basically, all that creature removal is going to be really good because you're playing against a creature heavy deck. I also think that Black Knight might be quite good because... I mean, he's playing Swords to Plowshares to take care of creatures, right? Well, Black Knight's got protection from white, so he cannot target the Black Knight. So maybe if you can, like, pump up a Black Knight and attack with it, that could be pretty sweet. I also think the four Dark Rituals, uh, sorry, the four Drain Lives in combination with the Dark Rituals are really good. Drain Life, of course, always being a good card, but especially in a mono black deck and especially in combination with those Dark Rituals. So, I mean, you've got a chance, but... At first glance, I would say David is a favorite here. Let me know in the comments below who you think the favorite is. I do think this deck is fantastic. And I'm super happy to see this in the top four. And, and who knows, maybe it's going to make it to the final. I mean, if you made it to the top four, you can make it to the final. Anyway, we've seen Suicide Black. We've seen Big Genie Beats. That means we're ready. Let's go to the semifinals of the Reprint Masters 2. Game number one, here we go. So it's uh, the big genie player on the left. So playing Serenip Efreet's beautiful playmat, by the way, man. Wow, that's st that's stunning, David. Do I see a sea serpent and a pirate ship? I want that playmat. Anyway, um, David playing with Serenip Efreet, Erna, Mahamoti Jin, and a lot of ramps. Starting with the Tundra, he's taking on Matt. And Matt is just playing Suicide Black, Sleeveless, Mono Black deck like you probably remember from the earliest days of Magic. And he's just starting with the Swamp and a Pass. So a slow start from both players. And here we go, David doing something here. There is a Sylvan Library. So the Enchantment from Legends, that's going to allow him to look at the top three cards during his draw step and put them in any order. And if he wants to draw extra cards, he can pay four life. There we see the first card here being played by Matt, a Black Knight. So the 2-2 two -two First Striker. And it's going to be interesting to see if David now perhaps has a Serenip Efreet turn three. That would be good for David, bad for Matt, of course. Remember, Matt is also playing with four Unholy Strength. So if you can play an Unholy Strength on the Knight, you've got a 4-3 First Striker that cannot be targeted by a Swords to Plowshare. So that's pretty good. So Matt here looking at the top three cards because of that Sylvan, looking at his hand, of course, trying to make uh, the right decision. What to do? Putting some of them back. Look at that. Taking four damage. He's taking one extra card. Going to 16. You can take two extra cards max with the uh, Sylvan Library. But remember, you got to pay four life every time. There we see an Elvish Archer. So a 2-1 First Striker. And that's going to work nicely. It's going to be a nice blocker against uh, the Black Knight. So they can trade. Look at that, Matt tapping one. Are we going to see... Oh, we're going to see a weakness. Taking care of the Elfish Archer. I like this. A lot of removal, of course, in the deck of Matt. Matt attacking here for two. So we see David dropping to 14. No land drop, though. But he does have another play to make. There we see a Willow the Wisp. And I think when you're playing against these colors, you know, if you're Matt, you don't have to keep a black open to regenerate the Willow because you're not playing against red. Red, of course, having access to lightning bolts. There we see a tap and we see a Swords to Plowshares on the Willow. And that's understandable because David is playing a lot of like big uh, genies and Afrites and the Willow is just a great blocker for that. So it makes sense that he wants to get rid of it. So the Willow is out of the way and... David again looking at the first three cards. He's on 14 now. I'm really expecting him to play a creature this turn. An Urnum or a Serendip. Again, an extra card. Ooh, gonna go to 10. Perhaps he's taking all these cards because he just is not finding anything 
on the top of his library, so he wants to go through his cards quicker, playing another Elvish Archer. So let's hope for David that this can stick, because he's already on 10. Remember, Matt's playing Mono Black. That's quite aggressive. Now he's got three Swamps. It was really looking good for David when he played that Sylvan. I thought, okay, now he's probably going to find like the Surrendips and stuff, and he'll be fine, but so far he hasn't. And also missed a land drop. There's a drain life for one on the archers. So you see Matt really wants to keep the pressure on. That means one extra life for Matt. And of course two more damage here for David. Gonna drop to eight. He's so low already. He can still stabilize of course. He's got time. Five cards in hand for David. He's going to look again at the top three cards because of that Sylvan. And let's hope for David that he can find something to stabilize. He's picking one card, of course. He's on eight. You don't want to lose even more life. And, okay, another Archer. Okay, so this is Elvish Archer number three of the game. The first one had a weakness, the second one had its life drained, so the archers are not very fortunate, but perhaps this one is going to stick to the board. What I really like about these first strike creatures, by the way, is if you've got multiple, they make a great blocker, like two elvish archers, because they've got first strike. Oh, look at this, a terror on the elvish archer. So the third one is going to get terrorized. Oh, this is so bad. So bad for David here. And Matt's doing a great job just killing all the Elvish archers and just pushing through with that knight. That knight has dealt a lot of damage. There's another attack. He's going to drop to six here. Oh, man. And this is unexpected. When I looked at the decks, in my opinion, David was favored. But uh, look at Matt go, right? And again, uh, David can look at the top three cards. Already know, knows two of those three cards. One of the things I like to do, by the way, is combine Sylvan Library with a Shuffle effect. For example, you can combine it with an Untamed Wilds. Look up the land you need, shuffle your library, and then you can the next turn you can look at three new cards with the Sylvan. There's the Surrendip. Okay, the problem, of course, here is that that Surrendip is also going to hurt David. He's already on six. So this is not the worst card for Matt to face. It does mean he cannot attack with the uh, Black Knight, unless, of course, he can find an Unholy Strength. That would be devastating for David. Or we go, oh, we're going to see Unholy Strength. Oh, no. Attack with a 4-3. Oh, this is such a killer for David. I mean, I feel like he's got a block here. You don't want to, but I feel like he kind of has to. I mean, he can take the damage to go to two, but then he'll go to one. Nice altar on the unholy strength, by the way. Uh, Matt is also an artist. He also made the play mat that he's playing on. Just for fan art, by the way. So not commercial, just for fan art. Oh my god, this is so bad for David. This is so bad for David. This is so bad. He's going to take the damage it seems. Oh, he's going to take the he's going to go to 2. I think I would have blocked personally. There's another black knight. I mean, it, it it doesn't matter, I guess, you know. It doesn't matter. Oh man. Gonna go to one. So that one Black Knight has actually dealt 10 points of damage already because he took eight damage from his own Sylvan and one damage from the Surrender Pafrit. But the other damage is all dealt by that one Black Knight. Wow, what a game this is. It's looking really, really bad for David. He's on one. I think what could kind of help him here maybe is if he plays... An Urnum? I mean, it's not great because he's going to have to give Forest Walk a certain point to, hit the, to one of the Knights. He's going to die, but I think just... I'm thinking short term. If you can find an Urnum to block the 4-3 Black Knight, 
which then probably isn't going to attack. And then at the end of his turn, he can kill his own Urnum with the Swords if he has it and gain some life so that he can take the damage from the Surrender or, of course, kill his Surrender for free. But anyway, it's going to be super difficult. But I'm trying to think of a way for David to kind of survive. I guess the best thing for him to do here is Swords his own Surrender and then play a Balance. That would be quite the play because that's going to kill both the, um, the Black Knights. There's another surrender. Oh, man. I understand this play. You got to do what you got to do, but he's so dead. There seems to be no way out here for David. Luckily, it's only game number one here in the semifinals of the Reprint Masters. Remember, the winner of this match will continue to the finals of this tournament. There is a tap. Dark Ritual. Ashes to Ashes. Oh, man. It's the pain train here. The pain train. It's the end of the line here for David. He is dead. Wow. What a first game here. Matt winning it. Game number one. Game number two. Here we go. And uh, it's David now on the play. And that does make, of course, a big difference, I feel, in this matchup. Ooh, look at that, though. David taking a mulligan. So he's starting with six. But I think being on the play with these decks, that's a big difference. Tropical Island into London or else. This is what David wants to do, right? Ramp up, play his Urnum, Serendips, Mahmoud. He's just said, just those turns early. That can make a big difference. Let's see what Matt can do on his turn one. There's a Swamp tapping the Swamp. A Paralyze. That's kind of a, a bolt the bird here, but then a Paralyze the Elf. And that's a good play, of course. So remember, David can now pay four mana in his upkeep to untap the Lanawar, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. There we see a Tundra hitting the board. Okay, Soul Ring. So he's really ramping up any Birds of Paradise. For a moment there, I thought it would be tap the Soul Ring, tap Trop, play Serendip, but that didn't happen. He's playing a Birds of Paradise instead. There's an Urk Raiders on the side of Matt. So much mana now for David. Only two cards in hand, though, for him. But if one of those two cards is a big creature, he's doing quite well. We see a pass turn from Matt here. Let's see what David can do. Drawing a card there for turn. Tapping four here. There's an Urnum. There's one of those big creatures we talked about. And now that Urk Raiders is just not looking that strong anymore. But do remember, Matt's got a ton of removal in his deck. He's got Terrors. He's got, well, Weakness is not that relevant right now. But he's got Paralyzes. Ashes to Ashes. There we see the Terror taking care of the Urnum. And now he can swing in with the Urk Raiders. Probably going to deal the first damage. And I think that's the silver lining here for David, that this is just the first damage that, that Matt has been able to do. And of course, he is ramping up. Are we going to see another play from Matt here? Still has one black open. No, we don't. Just a pass. Remember, the Paralyze is still on the Lanor Elves. That's why it doesn't untap there. That's not too bad for David, because he's got enough. Look at that, playing another Urnum. And this is what David wants to do, and this is what I expected him to do in game one. You know, ramp up, play out those big genies and afrites. And that's, of course, a problem for Matt. But again, Matt has a lot of removal in his deck as well. So if he can find that, he can just continue swinging in with the Urk Raiders. Now remember, Urk Raiders has to attack every turn. Oh, unholy strength! It's a 4-4, though. It's not big enough. It's still going to die. Does maybe Matt have a weakness? That would be hilarious. He could play a weakness on the Urnum. So Matt can also decide not to attack with the Urk Raiders, but then I believe you take two points of damage. He's tapping two. Are we going to see a terror? Another Urk Raiders. Yeah, and he's going to choose not to attack. Exactly. So he's going to take the damage. And the interesting thing here is that he is playing out a second Urk Raiders. For a moment there, I thought maybe he's not going to play out anything but get, because then David, you know, David has to give Forced Walk to one of the two creatures of Matt. 
And if the other Urk Raiders wouldn't be on the board, David simply had to give Forest Walk to the Urk Raiders with the Unholy Strength on it, meaning it would be unblockable and David could deal four points of damage. So that would be quite interesting. And he's tapping four more. What is David going to do? Okay, he's going to untap the Lanawer Elves. That kind of says a lot about the other two cards in hand, doesn't it? So untapping here the Lanawer Elves with that Paralyze on it. Are we going to see a land drop at least from David? Three cards in hand at the moment. And no, we're not. We're just going to see a pass. Also three cards in hand, it seems, for Matt then going to card number four right now. Playing a Swamp. I mean, one of those two Urk Raiders has Forest Walk. It's probably the 2-3 one. So he can at least attack for free with that. Put David on 16. And then he probably wants to keep the Urk Raiders, the other one with the Unholy Strength, at bay. But then he needs to take two more points of damage. The best thing for Matt here, obviously, would be to find another kind of way to remove the Urnum on the side of David. Because then he can swing in with both Urk Raiders. That would be quite devastating for David. But Matt now kind of in the tank, so I guess he hasn't found another Terror, or else he would have played it out already. Yeah, playing, attacking here with the Forest Walk Urg Raiders. So he's going to put David here on 16. And he's going to take two damage because he doesn't want to attack with the other Urg Raiders. And is he then going to do anything in his second main phase? Maybe playing more creatures out? Only three cards in hand, of course. No, he's not passing the turn. Another line could be, if he's got a Drain Life in hand, for example, is attack with his other Urg Raiders as well. Then Dave will probably block that Urg Raiders on the Urnum. And then second main play the Drain Life, killing the Urnum. That could be a line of play. Anyway, we see a Forest here by David. I believe he's got three cards in hand now after he played out that forest. Attacking here with the Urnum. So he's saying, you know what? If you attack, I can, for example, chump block with my Lana or, or, or just take that four damage. But I, I, I think he's probably going to chump then. Anyway, first he attacked with the four. Is he going to block though? He is blocking with the Howl from Beyond. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I love this stuff. I mean, Howl from Beyond would have been a really good offensive card as well. But, you know, Matt's trading here. It's not too bad for David, right? Because Matt is losing three cards with that exchange. Is he going to play? Is he going to play a Mahamoti? Mahamoti Chen! One of my favorite cards in Magic, ladies and gentlemen. I love the fact that it's got one toughness more than a Sheevan Dragon. That's something I always liked about the card. Anyway, and of course that little guy with the lamp, right? Obviously you got to think of Aladdin, but I always thought, okay, that's me. And that is my genie. So here we see Matt attack still. It still has Forest Walk, but it's looking really bad for Matt. He has to take care of that Mahamoti. Hypnotic Spectre. And uh, we see David now going to 14 because of that Urk Raider attack. But it's, it's looking bad for Matt in, uh, in game number two here. Now, do remember Matt, of course, being one game up already. So that would make it 1-1 if David can win. So David here, of course, attacking... And Matt here taking the damage, dropping to 11. Another Mahamoti? What's better than one Mahamoti? Two Mahamoti! Wow, 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 wow. I mean, Matt needs his ashes to ashes pronto. He's on 11 here. Remember, he's got the Urk Raiders that... Doesn't have Forest Walk anymore. It's got it. Well, I mean, it wants to attack. If you don't attack with it, you take two points of damage. I mean, Matt's right now in a position where he doesn't want to be. Tapping a black here. Okay, Paralyze. 
Probably going to paralyze the Mahamoti here. That makes sense. The problem, of course, for him is... Yeah, attacking with... I like this. Just being aggressive. Who cares? Okay, changing his mind, though. I guess the better play would be to just attack with the Urk Raiders, keep the Hypnotic at bay to chum block. Then again, if you have something in your hand, maybe another chum blocker, you could consider attacking with the Hippie. So here we see you attack for two. So Dave's going to drop to 12. The problem, of course, is Dave's got, got enough mana here to, to untap the Mahamoti. Right? I would untap it. And he is untapping the Mahamoti Jin. That makes sense. It's really sweet to see all those Mahamotis. I, I, think, I think they're really going to trample all over Matt. I think, I mean... He can attack now for 10, kind of forcing Matt to do a chum block with the hippie. That means he's going to drop to 6. There we see the attack. Interesting. I mean, it could have considered attacking with the Lana or Elves as well. For the simple reason that, you know, Matt would probably still chum block the uh, Mahamoti. But there we see second main, another Tundra. Tapping two, and there's an Elvish Archer. And Matt kind of needs a miracle. This is his, his last turn here. Even if he finds an Ashes to Ashes, it's not great because that deals five damage to you as well. So he would drop to one. But it could be a starting point. Tapping two, okay, there's another Urk Raider. Attack with the other one. The problem, of course, for Matty is that he's got no answers to those two Mahamoti Jins. Okay, there we go. Double Dark Ritual. No, he only had two Dark Ritual in hand. I think that's what he's saying. So he's just showing his hand here. And uh, we can see David here finishing. Mahamoti kill! I love that, man. I love that, David. Uh, anyway, this is game number two. What I also love is the fact that it's now 1-1. One, one. So we are going to an all-decisive game number three. Game number three. Here we go. This is the deciding game. And, you know, who's ever going to win this will end up in the finals. Here we see David taking a mulligan, by the way. He's on the draw. And I think the fact that Matt's on the play, I mean, that makes a big difference. Anyway, David starting with six in hand. Matt keeping his hand, it seems, starting with a Swamp Dark Ritual. Are we going to see if not expect her? Oh, there's a Black Knight, Unholy Strength, a 4-3 First Striker. And remember, it's got protection from white, so David cannot just simply kill it with a Sword to Plowshare. So perhaps this is even better than a turn one hippie here for Matt. Oh man, that's instant pressure for David. Let's hope for David that he's got some ramp going on. We see a Tropical Island. He's tapping it, though. Are we going to see exactly Lana or Elves? So that means he's got a little bit of ramp going. He needs to get, like... I mean, if he can play a turn three earn him, that would be quite good, because that can stop the Black Knight. Anyway, let's first see what Matt can do, finding a second Swamp. Of course he's going to swing in, right, with the 4-3 first Striker. Does he have more Unholy Strength? Oh, he's got to paralyze. Again, that paralyze. He did that in game two, attacking him for four. And it's such a good play because it takes away the tempo advantage of David. So he's got to deal with that paralyze. And passing to turn here. So David uh, has a problem because at 4-3, Black Knight is going to be hard to stop. Okay, there we see a mana vault, but no land drop. Oh, this is so bad for David missing a land drop. Maybe he can play an Urnum next turn, but remember, the Urnum is also going to get Forced Walk. Another Unholy Strength! This is insane! Six power Black Knight! David dropping to 10. Wow! Only one card in hand for Matt, but Matt doesn't care. I mean, he's like, I've halved David's life. And we haven't even started this match. Well, this game, I should say. We have started the match. Anyway, game number three. Remember, if Matt wins this, he's going to go to the finals of the Reprint Masters. He's so close. David on 10. David needs to play out something. It's now a 6-4 first striker. It's like a crawl worm with first strike and protection from white. That's insane. That is really, really good. 
Remember, you cannot play with Psionic Blast in this format because it's not reprinted in 4th edition Chronicles or revised because the Psionic Blast would be ideal right now for David. There we see that Urnum, but it's, I mean, it's not great. It's just not great. He needs to play it. I get it, but it means he's going to take a damage from the Volt. He's probably going to chump now. I mean, he's got to do it, exactly. Chumper to chumper to chump. And there's a pass, going to take a damage, going to drop to nine. Only one mana available to solve this problem, which is a 6-4 Black Knight. And he's just passing the turn. He's going to drop to three here. There we see an Urk Raiders making matters even worse. Is Matt going to go to the finals of the Reprint Masters with his unsleeved mono black deck? Not quite sure why he's untapping the Mana Vault, by the way. Because that, that Mana Vault should stay tapped. He should go to two. Exactly. That was some wishful thinking by David here. David tapping the drop. I mean, he needs a miracle. Okay, that's something at least. No, it's not enough. Because remember, Matt's got the Urk Raiders and the Black Knight. There's a weakness making it even worse. Attacking here. And that's it. Matt has made it to the finals of the Reprint Masters. And this is quite unexpected, to be honest. When I looked at the decks, I thought David was a favorite. Obviously, Matt's deck can win against any deck. And this is another proof of that. But uh, I wasn't expecting him to win like this. Anyway, Matt winning 2-1, to one, advancing to the finals. Congratulations, Matt. Um, and if you want to see that finals, please come back here next week, Friday, uh, sorry, next week, Tuesday, that is, because then I will have the finals for you of the Reaper Masters. And then one of the two decks will be this deck by Matt Strott. Congratulations, Matt, for advancing to the, um, to the finals of this grand tournament, man. I'm just... I'm a little bit flabbergasted. Uh, I didn't expect this. Anyway, I would also like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I'd like, you, like to ask you to do a few things. First of all, please like this video. It really helps. Also, leave a comment. And if you want, share it on your socials. And if you're not a member yet, please subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and now that that is out of the way, the last thing that I would like to ask from you is to take a look on patreon.com slash timmytalks because there you can find out how you can support Timmy Talks financially. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a sponsor of the show. The cool thing is if you become a sponsor of the show, you can also join in into these events because these online tournaments... I organize them for my channel members and my patrons. So if you become a patron, you can join these tournaments. Also, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll and all that for just $1 a month. So please take a look on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and find out how you can support my channel. And now we are going to the end scroll and have a look at our fantastic, wonderful, amazing patrons and channel members.